2022 has been about as deep of a hellish disaster in crypto and really all markets as anyone could have ever predicted in their wildest, most masochistic bear euphoria fantasies. Perma bears like Michael Burry from The Big Short couldn't have even dreamed of this level of destruction. However, there is good news. By understanding exactly what happened in 2022 and anticipating what might happen in 2023, I believe just like bear markets of the past, there can be some absolutely historic, generational, once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that we set our sights on. So today begins the first of a two-part series where we dive into the absolute craziness that was 2022, internalize those lessons learned, and set our sights squarely on where the value centers and biggest opportunities might be for 2023. If you're still here, if you're still active in crypto, I believe that you've already endured some of the worst pain and can start looking forward to some absolutely amazing opportunities and that you're probably well-suited to deal with what's left of this bear market as we look forward to the future. So cheers to all of you who have made it through the worst year in markets in decades, the first chapter in the worst bear market that probably any of us will endure in our lifetimes. And for that, I salute you. Go ahead, drop a like on this video and let's dive in. Despite the digital gold narrative, Bitcoin sunk like a lead balloon as soon as quantitative tightening was kicked off by the Fed. And while most altcoins did not fare better than Bitcoin, the total market cap of crypto sank from a peak of 3 trillion to under 900 billion. The number two cryptocurrency, Ethereum, fared almost equally to Bitcoin. As you can see, it finished off the year almost equivalent to where it started in the Ethereum versus Bitcoin price, currently sitting at about 0.072. Taking just one look at the year to date filter on the top cryptocurrencies, and you can see that almost everything has been a bitter bloodbath. With Bitcoin down almost 65%, Ethereum 67%, and big red numbers across the top 20. In fact, there's only two cryptocurrencies in the top 100 that have even managed to clock any gains whatsoever. Special shout out here to GMX, which is up 104% year to date, and Trust Wallet Token, which is up 85%. GMX effectively allows you to go long and short and to do derivatives trading completely decentralized without putting your coins on exchanges. Now, in the wake of several centralized players completely failing and locking out their customers who are now looking at complete losses on the coins they had on those exchanges, of course, trading with full self-custody is becoming an increasingly popular narrative. And this is one of the biggest lessons of 2022 that we haven't spoken about since the early days of crypto. The timeline of events here is really intense. As you can see, we had a wormhole hack, the SEC finding BlockFi, the Ronin hack, Terra's collapse, CFTC suing Gemini, SEC investigating Binance, Celsius freezing withdrawals, Coinbase cutting staff, Horizon bridge hack, Three Arrows files for bankruptcy, Voyager digital files for bankruptcy, Celsius files for bankruptcy, MicroStrategy sailor drops CEO role, US sanctions tornado cash, Alameda co-CEO resigns, Winter mute hack, Kraken's Powell drops CEO role, SEC investigates Yuga Labs, Binance saying it will sell FTX native token FTT, FTX filing for bankruptcy, BlockFi filing for bankruptcy, and SBI arrested in the Bahamas. It's been a whirlwind of almost nonstop negative news. But one of the things that I want to point out that is most important of almost anything in this entire year is correlations between tech stocks or really all risk assets and crypto itself. You see, during the bull run of 2020 and 2021, it wasn't entirely clear whether crypto was sparking an entirely new wave of revolution through DeFi and NFTs or whether it was behaving exactly as it should as one of the riskiest asset classes in the most risk on environment in the history of the modern economy. Understanding this relationship between crypto and risk assets, or really crypto and the macro economy as a whole, is one of the most important takeaways from this year. And if you don't learn this lesson, you simply will fail to understand how crypto will perform in the future. There's no question that crypto currently is and will continue to behave as the ultimate bastion for risk on upside and downside. On top of that, there were two critical lessons that 2022 taught us. First is that fixed rate yield is totally unsustainable in a bear market. And with bear markets built into the fabric of crypto, anything promising a fixed rate of yield should be treated with insane extreme caution. I will caveat that it is possible for people to provide cash on cash yield sort of in the range of what the US government is providing, meaning that US treasuries are currently yielding about 5% annual rate of return on your cash. So if you put in a 
$100,000, you'll be earning $5,000 for buying treasury notes. Now that's the US government literally printing money to pay back those debts. Anything above that 5% represents risk. And depending on how far above that 5% you go, the risk becomes more and more extreme. This was made abundantly clear during the Luna collapse, where several major players, including Pantera, Hashed, Jump Trading, Galaxy, Three Arrows Capital, Hodlnot, Coinbase, and Binance, all got hit hard by the collapse of UST. UST got so big and was functioning so well and was so trusted during the bull run that it surprised everyone when it completely fell apart in the bear market. Now, of course, hindsight's 2020. It's easy to look back and say, hey, that shouldn't have worked. But when something's been working rain or shine for over a year, it tends to lull you into a false sense of complacency. So going forward, anything that promises you fixed rate yield in crypto should be treated exactly as it is. A very, very hot potato that you do not want to allocate too many funds to because inevitably the rubber will hit the road, that yield will start to fall apart, and you might not be holding what you think you're holding. Now, many believe that the collapse of Terra put so much pressure on the ecosystem through forced liquidations, selling of Bitcoin to defend the Terra peg and other things like that, that it effectively created a cascade of issues across the ecosystem. This caused bankruptcies across the board from Three Arrows Capital to BlockFi to Celsius and eventually FTX. Now, to be honest, there are so many people who have covered FTX. Given how angry I was about the FTX situation and the fact that I also got duped by the FTX branding, I didn't want to pursue FTX videos, which were going completely viral to actually bolster my channel and get more clicks. There were so many people covering it. I didn't feel like that was really enriching my audience to constantly try to drive so many clicks out of that event. That was just my choice. But let's be honest. At this point, everyone knows what happened. FTX stole customer funds. They leveraged themselves to the eyeballs on the FTT token, and when the FTX FTT token came crashing down, so did the entire FTX empire like a house of cards. But the lesson here is really clear. Crypto and decentralized technology were not built to empower single centralized entities or businesses. They weren't designed to empower exchange CEOs as the next billionaire class of innovative entrepreneurs. No, the point of this technology was self-sovereignty, true ownership, and never, ever being able to be separated from your funds. Beyond the obvious lessons of always trying to remain in control of your funds, we must pay attention to critical learnings. We must also focus on what the market has chosen as a result of this. No amount of exchange failures changed the technology of Bitcoin, of Ethereum. Learning to manage your own keys is critical, but there is a new class of decentralized applications that are starting to get popular due to the fact that they don't require you to turn over your keys. I believe if we're able to see a bottom in 2023 and a reversal of the market trend, that the applications that are truly decentralized, that never have a point where you're separated from your keys and allow for all kinds of financial services, those are the ones that will and should proliferate in the future. But even in the wake of the most punishing, unthinkable collapse of an empire in the modern crypto era, FTX, we didn't see much downside momentum on price. And on the scale of 1 to 10 of bad news, the FTX collapse was about 100 million. So why wasn't there a brutal sell-off in Bitcoin? Why wasn't there a brutal sell-off in Ethereum? Well, the answer is quite simple, actually. Crypto, in the wake of the Fed changing its policies, has shown itself to be just a single asset class within the larger spectrum of macro risk assets. Understanding that nothing changed dramatically around the Fed policies as a result of FTX helps you understand that really what's been driving price this entire time has been the Fed, has been the macro. This is one of the most liberating and important realizations for crypto, as crypto's never endured a macro bear market in the history of its existence. However, this learning, if internalized properly, if understood and acted upon properly, will lead to massive gains in the future. Even gold is down and gold's supposed to be the ultimate inflation recessionary times hedge. 2022 has been horrific with the collapse of many crypto empires. The revelation that fixed yield just simply cannot be sustained in crypto. The nonstop barrage of negative news, of fear mongering, and overall destruction of the perception of crypto as the emerging and disruptive asset class that it is. But remember, bear markets are designed to get you to sell, just as bull markets are designed to get you to buy. And while selling early on in the bear market was absolutely the right play, understanding when the market has truly hit its bottom and a new cycle is beginning is the absolute key to crushing it, not just over the next year, but over the next decade plus. I believe firmly that once this market reaches its bottom, whether it's in 2023 or 2024, the people who begin allocating to the market around this time will be in an incredibly powerful position and that those prices will absolutely never be revisited. So for those of you who are still
still here, who are still fighting the good fight. And I know there are tons of you because my videos are getting about one third to half the amount of views and traction as they were in the bull market, which means most of you are still here. And if you are still here, please comment in the comment section below. What's keeping you here? What are you most excited about? Have you sold your portfolio? Or are you still holding it? Now I've shared transparently throughout 2018, I got absolutely crushed. I got destroyed. I held on to everything until it was worth dust. And all I wished was that I had a little bit of dry capital left to buy the bottom when it was so clearly in at the end of 2018 or throughout 2019. I believe history is repeating itself, not in the exact same way, but it sure as heck rhymes. I believe that things will get worse before they get better. Because in the end, the entire market is riding on the back of the Fed economic policies. Understanding this is equal parts frightening as it is liberating and insightful. Governments love to print money. They will print money in the future. And that means there will be more money in the world than there ever has been before on the next cycle. That means naturally, asset prices are programmed to go higher eventually. We'll be pointing this general reflection into very specific examples on the next video as we break down what we are looking forward to in 2023. Every single learning of 2022 makes us better, stronger, and more capable of investing in 2023. I know for me personally, my team has produced more technology and shipped more product this year in the absolute worst possible climate than ever before. And that's super exciting. My biggest bets have always been on building important things for this ecosystem. I'm excited to continue to share those with you and to show you what real conviction is all about. It's one thing to throw some money at the market, but to dedicate your entire life to investing, building tech, technology, making content, and generally eating, sleeping, and breathing in this industry 24-7, I believe is the ultimate sign of conviction. Just like bear markets of the past, things are really not that exciting right now, which is all the more reason that each and every person who takes the time and effort to actually understand what's going on is doing more than 99% of people will. Anyone wants to pay attention when things are going 100x overnight. Of course, of course they do. It's really hard to pay attention when things have no perceived benefit for months or potentially years. And for that reason, we'll be doing the difficult work for this community throughout the bear market. And if you enjoy that, please smash that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you very soon on part two of the 2022 recap, where we look to the future of what 2023 might hold.